Hey, what's up you guys, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to be using examples from Pokemon and The Legend of Zelda to explain how the idea of classical conditioning or learning through associations actually works without it being painfully boring like in a textbook. So without further ado, let's just get into it. But before you get started, I actually want to give a little bit of background. So in 1897, a Russian physiologist named Ivan Pavlov, who's pretty much the real world version of Professor Rowan, but with way cooler facial hair, published his findings surrounding the ideas of classical conditioning while he was actually studying something completely different. He was studying the digestion in dogs. But now you may be wondering, well, what actually is classical conditioning? Well, classical conditioning is when you pair two stimuli together, a stimulus being any object or event that elicits a sensory or behavioral response in an organism, so me and you, um, but when you pair those stimuli together, you'll create a learned response, whether that response is voluntary, meaning they intend to do it and they're fully conscious of it, or it's involuntary, meaning it's kind of more unconscious and they don't fully have control over that response. And to give an example of this, I actually want to mirror Ivan Pavlov's famous experiment with his dog, but I want to put a little bit of a twist on it. So let's pop on our scientist glasses, throw on some lab coats, and let's go say hi to our little buddy Yamper who's gonna be helping us out today. And let's go see how this actually works. So Yamper's gonna be our test subject today because A, he, he's just a very, very good boy. And B, Houndour was a bit less cooperative. <laughs> and we're gonna be feeding Yamper a lot of burger steak curry in this experiment because, well, it's his favorite kind. Now in classical conditioning, we will always start with an unconditioned stimulus, which will cause an unconditioned response. So in the case of Yamper, the curry will be the unconditioned stimulus and Yamper drooling over the curry will be the unconditioned response. And the reason that these are unconditioned are because Yamper hasn't been trained to drool when it sees or smells the curry. He just does it naturally. This is where our conditioning or our training comes in because we can now associate the unconditioned response, Yamper's drooling when the curry is close by, we can associate it with a neutral or unassociated stimulus, which in this experiment will be the sound of a chingling ringing before the curry comes out. Now on its own, our neutral stimulus, again this sound of chingling ringing, won't cause a notable reaction from Yamper because it's just not associated with the curry quite yet. So now you might be wondering, well how do we create that association? Well every time we bring out curry for Yamper, we'll have chingling start ringing first. What this does is over time Yamper will begin associating the sound of chingling with being served such delicious steak curry. This would then change the sound of chingling from being a neutral stimulus to a conditioned stimulus because Yamper knows that anytime it hears a chingling, it's a about to get some delicious steak curry. So in turn, all it would take for us to make Yamper start drooling would be to have Chingling making some noise, therefore making this drooling a conditioned or trained response, even though it's completely unconscious and involuntary. Now, while this experiment definitely gets the gist of classical conditioning out there and shows how it works, how can we actually see it being used practically by video game developers in the games that we know and love? Well, one example in particular that I want to point out is Nintendo actually uses these classical conditioning tactics in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild to play off of our involuntary responses to stimuli to teach us about the world without experiencing explicitly telling us through dialogue or text boxes. The best example of this has to be found within our interactions and confrontations with guardians. So really quickly, I'm gonna play a clip of music from the game to see how you kind of respond just naturally. Now there's a good chance that if you've played Breath of the Wild, y your heart rate went up a little bit when that song started playing. And if you haven't, then maybe you didn't feel anything at all. This is a perfect example of classical conditioning because if we go back to the table we were looking at earlier, we can see that the threat of guardians coming to mercilessly kill you will be the unconditioned stimulus. Then some level of anxiety, at least for me, is the unconditioned response. And the musical cue that indicates the guardian 
Meridian has seen you is the neutral stimulus, because without any knowledge of the Legend of Zelda, or being taught by the game about the dangers of these guardians, this music probably won't elicit much of a response. It's then, through pairing this music with the threat of a guardian chasing you down, that you begin unconsciously associating the two with one another, and then when you hear those frantic piano notes, you automatically begin to get anxious about what's about to happen. This would then see the music become a conditioned stimulus, and the fear or anxiety become the conditioned response, because the game has literally trained you to panic whenever you hear this music, because you just think that these eight-legged demons are coming to kill you and steal your firstborn child or something. At this point, we've looked a lot at how we can be conditioned to build up these responses, so now I think it would be really beneficial to look at how they can actually be broken. So going back to the example with Yamper, let's say that you kept ringing the Chingling over and over and over and over again, but no curry came out. Eventually, Yamper would realize, oh crap, there's no curry coming when the Chingling rings. What the f***? And so the association between the curry and the bell is broken, which is what we like to call extinction of the conditioned response. Meaning that there's no association between the chingling and the curry whatsoever anymore in Yamper's little noggin. All in all, outside of these more superficial usages of it in video games and other forms of media, classical conditioning is a great tool that's been used therapeutically to modify more negative behaviors like substance abuse in people who may be suffering from that, and even can be used within a therapeutic setting to desensitize people from their phobias. But please, I implore you, don't attempt to do this without the guidance of a counselor or therapist, because without their expertise in trying to conduct these ideas on yourself, it could genuinely do more harm than good. But that'll have to do it for today's video, guys, and I really want to hear all of your thoughts about today's videos in the comment section down below, and s tell me if you actually like this kind of new and kind of different direction that the channel's hang, because this is what I've wanted to be doing since I started the channel. So again, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, and while you're down there, why not liking this video, why not subscribing to my channel, and why not even ringing that notification bell, because I'm looking to start making videos every single week again. As always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, have a fantastic holiday season, and I will see you in the next video. Later.